Mr. Ch uh, Joint Chief of Staff, distinguished guests, fellow Chief of Navies and Coast Guard, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this uh, 12th edition of the Regional Sea Power Symposium. First of all, personally and on behalf of the, Italian, uh, the entire Italian uh, Navy, I would like to express my respectful gratitude to the Chief of Defense, Generale Enzo Vecciarelli, for being here with us today. Let me also express my highest appreciation to the great Blue Brotherhood, which is, has gathered here today. Thank you all. This edition of the Regional Sea Power Symposium marks an all-time record. 55 navies, 33, 34, including myself, I try to underestimate myself, 34 uh, of which represented by their chiefs, a highly qualified and experienced audience which will certainly empower the Regional Sea Power Symposium scope and reach for the sake of the maritime community. I would like to extend a special welcome to the navies attending the symposium for the first time. Bahrain, represented by Brigadier Marshal Al Khalifa. Cameroon, with his chief, Rear Admiral Jean Mendua. Republic of Congo, with his chief, Captain Rene Ganongo. Ivory Coast, with his chief, Rear Admiral Kwame Celestine Nguessan. Oman, represented by Captain Said Nasser Said Al Farsi. And Thailand, represented by Commander Kitty Npadke. Thank you for being here today. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. I would also, I would also thank all other representatives, both military and non military including international organizations, agencies, companies, academic institutions, and other stakeholders. I'm eager to share your valuable perspective and take advantage from your appreciated suggestions. This is probably the greatest value for the symposium, meeting together, exchanging different opinions, finding common solutions in an open and relaxed environment. Together, we are going to build up a brilliant dialogue based on trust, respect, and the stubborn resolution to achieve shared and agreed outcomes. I do believe that no other venue could foster our thoughts better than Venice. In this beautiful city, one of the most glorious and forefront maritime power raised and ruled, the Serenissima Repubblica, which based its well-being on safe trades along many sea lines, cultural relations and cooperation, not forgetting the astonishing skills in designing, building, maintaining and manning vessels around the Mediterranean Sea. A long success story sustained by a balanced synergy between refined diplomacy and expeditionary naval power. Look at this place. Here in the Arsenale, each single brick smells salty and encases fragment of history. This will definitely inspire, inspire our efforts. Back to us. We all know how crucial is maritime domain for global growth and prosperity. The precondition for the so-called blue growth is the ability to continuously allow free and safe access at sea. Nowadays, the sustainable development and the inclusive progress of our countries heavily relies on safe and secure oceans. Over 90% of global trade travel by sea. Around 80% of the world population lives within 200 kilometers from the coast. Oceans and seabeds provide more and more resources, while 90% of the worldwide telecommunication traffic runs through a strategic network of underwater cables. 
Indeed, the maritime domain has become more connected, providing significant opportunities for growth and prosperity, but also more contested, where recent trends such as resources competition, population growth, and climate change are posing new challenges, and governmental and non-governmental actors pressingly claim growing rights on the sea. After some decades when the world was apparently running through the path of total globalization, we are now assisting on a quite opposite trend. The world regionalizing, meaning that geopolitical, economic, and social fractures are arising. Although communication networks and commercial flows are still getting more and more complex and the world bending, competitors especially at the regional level, are steadily growing in number and assertiveness. The new battlefields are often the gaps and the gray areas in the current legal frameworks. And much of this new geopolitical posture are spreading throughout the seas, coupled with the, a bold application of international rule of law, which is often national interest oriented. That's why we are posing the question about the present relevance of, actually, of actuality of Montego Bay Convention, UNCLOS. The open sea, fundamental for free commercial and energetic trades, is shrinking. Disputes for maritime boundaries are arising in many regional areas as possibly the outcome of regional powers strategies. At the same time, the above-mentioned geopolitical rebalancing is turning, at the military level, into the, de the development of new vessels along with new weapons. This is especially true in the anti-access and area denial, the well-known A2AD denial field, resulting in a challenge for the free and peaceful employment of the open sea. Out of this, the question arises how to develop new Navy's capabilities to balance low and high-end roles, new Navy's roles that need to fit modern world's trend, where regional friction and more taking the scene. So do we need to redefine the concept of maritime power in light of new emerging trends? I consider extremely important to go deeper in this inquiry because it contributes to shape our roles and tasks within the broader maritime scenario. That is why I deem the 2019 theme of the Regional Sea Power Symposium the best suited for the achieving our goals, shaping our navies for the blue century. This is what we will be discussing in the next three days through a frank, positive, and proactive confrontation on the present and future challenges we are facing. In this, we are exploiting at our best what is a traditional but also extremely modern Navy role, diplomacy. And this was the basement upon which sessions have been built. The main subject was envisioned to inspire our debate on the role of our navies in the current maritime landscape, emphasizing the opportunities offered by the sea and identifying its new security challenges, along with the strategies that we must deploy to counter them. The aim is to analyze the possible role and future of modern navies, considering the present scenario of instability and conflicts and the various opportunities offered by the blue century. We will highlight the need to develop a more inclusive and balanced approach within the wider maritime community in order to broaden the maritime cluster and to fight sea blindness in our society. Safer seas means greater progress and prosperity for our country and for the entire world. The works will unfold in three sessions, focusing respectively on the international legal framework, the roles and capabilities of future navies, and the possible evolution of the concept of sea power. In details, the first session, 
titled The Internal Law of the Sea from Montego Bay to a New Model, The Impact on Navies and Others, chaired by Admiral Ahmed Khaled Hassan Saeed, Commander-in-Chief of the Egyptian Navy, which, is, which will not be present today. He was supposed to be here, but he will supersede by our friend, Chief of the Navy from Malta. And uh, we'll see the qualified contribution of France, Chile, Greece, Spain, Tunisia, UK, ICC, and the final insight by Professor Margelletti. The second, shaping our navies, looking at the blue growth, new capabilities and traditional roles, how to find the right balance between low and high hand, led by Admiral Antonio Maria Mendes Carado, Chief of Portuguese Naval Staff. Obrigado, Antonio. We'll take advantage of the support of Japan, Argentina, Israel, Turkey, and Italian Ship Owner Association. The third, the evolution of sea power in the blue century, the maritime domain as a key enabler to enhance resilience, challenges, and opportunities, managed by Admiral Ilkes Barbosa, Jr., commander of the Brazilian Navy, muito obrigado, Ilke, with the USA, China, Qatar, Russian Federation, and the closing remarks provided by Professor Edward Lutwak. Alongside the traditional works of the symposium, this uh, edition is taking advantage of the, some collateral events in the wake of a growing tradition which aims to exploit at the best the presence of such distinguished guests. The third meeting of the Navy Chief of the Adriatic Union Initiative, which took place yesterday after the ministerial meeting of the Adrian Ministries of Defense and provided fruitful guidance for the future of a successful initiative. The European Carrier Group Interoperability Initiative CHON meeting, where a suitable action will be identified to revamp and consolidate a strategic initiative for generated a carrier group in a European dimension. The second meeting of the technical leading navies of the Trans-Regional Maritime Network to discuss the possible evolution in a federative perspective. The high-level education chain meeting, chief of navy meeting, which I consider very important to share and strengthen common values for the benefit of the new leadership of our navies. The signature of the note of accession to transregional maritime network by the Pakistani navy, which will take place later this morning. I would like uh, to close borrowing some of the words of our head of state, President Mattarella, which. Uh, said something, in, uh, something that is uh, very close to my heart and uh, that I believe you will appreciate as well. This is, and I quote, the action of the Navy is invaluable. It is an element and a fundamental support of the life of our republic and of the life of any country, I would also add. Under this, I leave the floor to our child, General Becerelli. Thank you.